Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making these. Um, they are, well, um, water bottle holders for a bike. Really kind of cool. So today I'm going to be making these three, which um, this one was my first kind of test playing around with different methods. This one came out a little bit better, closer to what I wanted. And then this was the final shape that I really wanted out of the bottle holder. So this one's my favorite. Now, I made these three uh, from plans. Jeff from Reed Plains actually drew out a design for making one of these for himself. And so he is offering the plans up for free. And you'll notice these are a little different from the ones on the thumbnail. That's because I'm trying out different things. This one was my first rough prototype, just kind of roughly getting it to what I wanted. This one was a little bit closer to get the shape I wanted. And this one is really what I wanted in the end. Mine look very different from his and you can make them however you want. But uh, let's actually dive into making them. So uh, here are the plans that uh, Reed Plains is offering. Uh, it's one of four pages. Um, and unfortunately, I lost the audio on this, so I'm gonna have to voice over a little bit here. But uh, we're gonna start by actually making the form that this goes into. This is a three inch piece of PVC. And I had a four or four foot stick of it and I want to cut down about one foot. I'm gonna use the saw vise here to make sure I cut a line all the way across one side and then a parallel line down the other side. We wanna rip this down in half. So there's a good chance to use a cheap um, construction grade saw. Rip it all the way down the middle and then we can smooth off the cuts as needed with a plane. Are you talking about planing PVC? Yes, actually PVC planes really nicely and it works very, very well on plane irons. So I'm gonna flip the, uh, the plane upside down and actually clamp it on the side walls and you can see how it just peels off. Really, really beautiful curls and it's a lot of fun to, to work with. We're gonna smooth out all four edges and then we actually want to bevel one of these edges back on both halves. This way it will actually be able to open up farther. So you can see the angle we're putting on there. We're gonna do that on both halves of it and this will allow us to basically tape these two halves together. We'll cover that a little bit more because this is the outside shell of the form. Let's actually move on to the veneer and I have a whole bunch of scraps of veneer. We're going to need five pieces that are about seven inches by nine inches and we're going to laminate these together. So on the outside and uh, of either outside the grain is going lengthwise and the one in the middle of the grain is going lengthwise but the two other ones we want it to go across so that we have that plywood crossing uh, and I'm going to be using a total boat high performance epoxy on here. The uh, it's, it's absolutely one of my favorites anytime I really want a good solid bond. It is the, the go-to glue for really gluing things up. Anytime I'm doing uh, lamination, um, in particular this case where I really need a solid bond between them, high performance epoxy is what comes on. So bottom layer going with it and then the cross grain going across it. <laughs> I wish I had more of this darker color. I would have loved to have done the entire layer on that because you'll see this one later. This is my, my third of them to come out. And I really like how that one came out and I wish I had that layer going all the way across. So then the middle lane goes lengthwise and then we put another layer going crosswise. In this case, I have some quarter sawn uh, white oak. Yay! <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, scraps I had left over, so they, they go in between. And then for the inside, uh, the last layer, I have this bird's eye maple that I really, really like. It had a couple little knots in it, but those are, are perfectly fine. I'm gonna use some mold release to actually spray the inside of the form. And the form is a pipe that's outside diameter is uh, is two and three quarters inch. So if you can get uh, a two and a half inch uh, electrical conduit, uh, electrical PVC conduit, it works well. Um, I ended up actually ordering this aluminum tube on Amazon that happened to be the exact outside diameter. And you just clamp it down in here and once it gets close, then you put clamps across it and do the final squeeze in. And there, that's the form. And it works out really, really well. So three inch PVC on the outside and then two and three quarter inch yeah. on the inside with five layers in between and it works out really well. Let it set aside, come back and unclamp it, and now you can take it apart. Um, sometimes they're a little bit um, jiggly to take apart, but as long as the mold release is on there, uh, they actually come out pretty easily. On this one, the, the tube came out first. Some of them, the outside comes off first, but uh, whatever, they pop off, and it is really surprising to me how strong and structural yeah. these actually are. Uh, they are in incredibly strong and, and stiff. So if there's excess epoxy on here, I come back and scrape it all off. We want to get a nice clean surface on the outside here. 
um, and the, the scraping allows you to cut through the epoxy very, very quickly. Uh, I found I got some excess on the outside, and I didn't always get excess on the inside. I actually got a really nice, clean surface on there. Then we're going to come through and scrape it and sand it, and the sanding lets you know where you need to scrape a little bit more. Um, I, I do want to sand this all because I'm going to be doing a penetrating epoxy on top of it, so I want that mechanical bond. Then we need to actually create the design that I want on this. So I'm going to wrap a piece of paper on here and then start tracing it out. And I'm just going to trace out one half of the design. So I'm going to put a line right down the middle on the back half and then just draw some lines. What do you want this to look like? And I'm going to freehand it around and draw and fix it up and then not like it and put a new piece of paper on there and go back and forth until I get a design and a look that I like. Then we can fold it in half, use some scissors and transfer it from one onto the other half and that way the two halves uh, look the same. And then we can put this back on and get ready for the cutting. Um, I actually, uh, my first one, I put in the PVC and I cut through the frame and the PVC. You can see the old cut on there. And I thought, eh, it's not the best way to do it. Um, so now I actually have the PVC away from it so I can cut into the frame. And we are going to be using the turning saw. I made this one a while ago. It's one of my favorites. And I, I wasn't quite sure how it would hold on this, but these laminations coming together are actually incredibly strong and they, they work very, very well. So we're going to use that to just cut down along the pattern. And I'm focusing on one side and then focusing on the other side until we can cut along it and get really close to it. I don't need it to be exact because we're going to come back and clean it up. You can see there's a little bit extra hanging off here so we can come in and slice that off. Do the same thing on the other side. But before taking it out, uh, we're going to roughly clean it up to shape. And I have a file on here with a rounded, um, a half round side on it that's going to get rid of any of the, the saw cuts and, and junk left over on this. Next, we're going to come back in here and do the other side. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically the, the exact same thing, and depending upon what shape you want. Or if you want a hole going through the middle, then you're going to have to drill through and then do that on the middle. Uh, I decided I didn't quite like the look of the little. I like the, the simpler, smoother look. Uh, but, you know, if you want it, great, go for it. That's one of the fun things about this. You can do anything you want with it. And it slides in there really easily, but holds very, very well. Um, on this one, I actually did have some extra schmoo um, from the epoxy on the inside. The later ones, I didn't have a problem, but this was the, the first um, experimental piece I was working with. So I was using a really heavy grit sandpaper to grind down through it because I couldn't get the card scraper inside that. Um, and then I can come back with a finer and a finer bit. There, the two wings that come out, we need to trim those off. I left those a little bit long so that they would stick out. Um, and then we can come in and smooth them off. And from this point on, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'm going to do some of the aggressive work with a rasp. I want to actually make the inside here tapered so it accepts the bottle a little bit easier. And the rasp actually works really well to get it roughly to where I want. And then I'll come in with a file and get it a little closer. And then I'm going to come in with sandpaper and get it a little closer. And the final thing that's going to touch this is the sandpaper because I want it to uh, to hold uh, to the, the epoxy. Then once we get it exactly where we want, uh, I remembered, oh yeah, we need to drill some holes in this because I want to put the holes on before we put the finish. Uh, the holes are, are two and a half inches apart, um, at least on my bike. I don't know if that's a standard. I think it is, but I don't know. So I set out one, then marked the other one a little ways away. Uh, they are, if I remember correctly, they're a five millimeter um, thread. Um, but I can't remember that exactly, so measure your own. <laughs> so that's how it all comes together. Now we can start working on the finish. And for this, I'm going to be using some Total Boat Penetrating Epoxy. Uh, the Penetrating Epoxy just soaks into all the pores and finishes it out. It's not great for a UV, um, so we're going to be putting a UV coat on top of this, but it will give you a really, really nice finish on this. Now, one of the problems with using penetrating epoxy on a surface that's already been epoxy, it doesn't soak in everywhere. It will only soak in to where there are wood fibers and places where the epoxy isn't already. So we're going to put this on and just flood the surface with it. Let it soak up as much as we want, and we're going to basically treat it like an oil finish at this point. Uh, let it soak up as much as it wants, let it sit there for a little while, and then I'm going to come back a few minutes later, probably about 10-15 yes. minutes later, and I'm going to wipe off all the excess epoxy because I only want it to be epoxy on the inside. This way I don't have to come back and clean it up. I'm actually left with a really nice clean surface on it. Um, I really like this technique. It just gives you a, a good surface that's ready for it. Once the epoxy is cured, we want to put on a UV protective finish. And for me, I actually uh, decided to go with the stuff that uh, that Jeff recommends in the plans. And it's a System 3. Uh, it's a really nice top coat polyurethane, uh, water-based polyurethane, and it works really, really well. Um, and it's a UV protectant. So I got these jars that you can actually spray with. 
And uh, I was having a little bit of problem with the first one. I had to thin it out a little bit and add a little more water to it uh, for the jar to, uh, to work well. Um, but I really like how this came out. And you put it on basically like any other uh, polyurethane. Let it soak in. So we can spray out a couple coats, wet sand it, spray out a couple coats, wet sand it, and then do your, your final spray on it. And it really leaves a nice, nice gloss finish on this. I was really, really happy with how these came out. But then, of course, we need to apply some paste wax. Uh, this will just seal it in and give you that, that final uh, finish on there you want on it. Now, you can do without it, but uh, I like the, the look of the paste wax. It fills in a lot of those pores and just kind of smooths everything out so you get a nice, clean finish on there. We apply the wax and then let it cure for a little bit, polish it off, and they're basically done. Uh, there's really not that much to these. They're really, really simple projects, and they are a lot of fun. I just like how they came out, especially with this uh, tiger maple on there. Just really, really beautiful projects, and I'm looking forward to using this. Hmm. So this one is the mahogany outside with the walnut inside, one of my earlier ones. And then the first test sample, I don't even remember what that one was, and then to the, uh, the mahogany outside. So here we have tiger maple with a bird's eye maple on the inside and then I've got one line of a black walnut just to kind of trim out the edge. Really like how this one came out. So there you have it. Uh, these are really, really cool. Now, if you want to make these yourself, um, Jeff from Reed Plains, he has the plans for them. They're available completely for free. There's a link to it down below. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can see the ones in the thumbnail that he made were a little different with a hole through the middle. His were actually made with a router jig, so you could make a bunch of them very, very quickly. Uh, if you wanted to make these to, to sell, you could make them really, really quickly, uh, especially if you had all the jigs set up for it. They are a surprisingly simple project. And uh, I think I'm going to make a couple more for the experiment and gifts to give out. I really like this. It's a cool project. And when I first saw these from Jeff, I thought, oh, yes, I've got to make some of those. They are just kind of really, really cool. He actually made an entire bike in a very similar method to this, actually doing carbon fiber woodworking. Because uh, if you really think about it, carbon fiber is carbon held in an epoxy. Well, wood is carbon. So... Carbon fiber. Um, yeah, they are really, really, really durable and they have an incredible grip strength. The bottles are not going to come out of this at all. Um, they are really, really impressive. So yes, I like this and I'm looking forward to making a few more and I'd love to see what you guys make. So get those plans down below and jump into it. If you make one of these, please send me pictures of it. I'd love to see different shapes and uh, other ways of holding it on. There are so many other ways to do it and these are just a lot of fun. So again, grab the plans down below and have some fun with it. If you have any other thoughts, ideas, comments, things I should have done better, let me know those down below. I do read through all the comments and I answer as many as I can get to. And and I have a lot of fun with that. I learn a lot of things from you guys. So thank you for that. Anytime you hit the comments or you hit the like, share, subscribe button, those do help out the channel. They get us in front of more people and help the algorithm here. So thank you for that. That does mean a lot. If you want to take it one step farther, there's a whole bunch of people who are scrolling over here on the side. They are the patrons on Patreon, and they are the ones who quite literally keep us going. Without patrons and members here on the channel, uh, we wouldn't exist. So if you want to help out with that, there's a link to Patreon down below, or you can click the little join button down there and become a member here on YouTube. We do have special perks for both, and we do regular monthly hangouts hangouts and other things like that. So I thank you for that. I hope you like that. If you do have any other questions, let me know that. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Traditional carbon fiber. I think we could do a lot more with this.